All right, everyone, welcome along. So let's have a look this week at actually what goes on with single pane of glass reporting. What is it like to live in that landscape? And what does it mean for our business going forward from that first day of delivery? Because ultimately, if we don't get that right, what was the point? Why are we doing what Geordie Consulting is recommending or Geordie Intelligence is recommending our business do? rather than what almost everyone else is telling us is the right thing to do. Do we know something different to the rest of the world, or is something else going on? When you've watched this video and you realize that, you know, you'd like to get some help and support, or even just a simple conversation, just a that sanity check moment, drop us a line, office at geordieconsulting.co.uk, and we can get together and discuss what it is you want. And if, we, if you want our help, will help. If you want us to just give you some guidance to move to that next step yourselves, by all means, we're happy to do it. For now, though, let's have a look and see really what is going on when we talk about single pane of glass and that real world side of it. And really, what's the point of it all? So here we are, okay? This is our single pane of glass. At the moment, we've I've drawn this up around the idea of having a business with three key areas. Okay, we could have more. You could change this layout depending on what, you, what it is you want to do. The mindset behind this is around, you look in your business and the, well, the way the human mind works is it works from left to right. So kind of on the left-hand side, we would traditionally have what we would put as kind of our main department, what's our most important. So for a lot of businesses, that would probably be their finance department. You might say, well, we're more of a sales-oriented business. We want our sales. There's not really a true, this is the hard and fast that everyone has to use for it. It's something that will dictate around your business. You will know when you look at your business, when you look at the reports your business produces, which should go on the furthest left, okay? So we go left to right in terms of this, but it's a columnar way of looking at it and this Power BI dashboard. And again, dashboards in Power BI are different from dashboards in any other context. Because this dashboard in Power BI effectively is a menu, what we're showing here is what? Say, got eight boxes at least per area. Okay, so eight times three, what, 24. So that could be linking to 24 different report packs that we've written or report pages in Power BI or pages of reports. So everything we surface to a dashboard, we think about and we say, well, actually, what's the next level down for it? So you would put that top level KPI on that dashboard with a view that when you click on it, it will take you to the breakdown of that KPI to its critical success factor. So you can actually really see, for all we're saying that we're meeting 99% of our customer expectations, what does that constitute? How is that broken down? What does it actually mean? Because that's just as important as everything else. You know, If you're saying, well, we've got 99% satisfaction with our surveys, but we've got a 1% response rate, chances are you're not getting everything through. And have you got something, well, actually, you have to go through and have actually marked, say, well, I'm really happy with it, to be presented with a survey in the first place. All sorts of things like that happen. It goes through. But you need to have those critical success factors to really understand what it is. So each of these tiles, any tile here, could be showing us that critical success factor. So we could be saying each of these is a drill down into a next level down report. Okay. We can also have these going to a next dashboard as well. So we can have dashboards and dashboards that are there. So we've kind of looked a bit at this borough performance, right? I've not really done anything beyond putting a couple for Manhattan in because I don't really want to get drawn down by this. The principle is the same. We could build those up and have layers across different slices, across different depths as you drill through for it, okay? This is meant as our senior leadership team app. And the idea of this would be around, well, they're going to go and look at these are the top areas that we care about for us. But their value add that they get is because the report packs or the, sorry, the data set, the semantic model that builds up this report 
or this dashboard and report set, this app in Power BI parlance, is the same as anyone else would get. Okay. So the operational team that goes through and works beneath the CFO, for example, who's looking in at this from the finance perspective, they will have their own dashboard set. They will be building their own report sets, but based on the same semantic model. The idea being that when they come to do that piece of work, so that continual improvement activity, which is again a really important part of what we're doing and how our business works, they will build or have built or commission or do whatever it takes. Again, this is why we need that center for excellence and actually have that idea of internalizing how report content is built because it is drag and drop once you get to this point. They will commission a report that will show this is our critical success factor. If we know this change activity, this improvement activity is going to actually be successful or is it something that, well, okay, it didn't work. So we know more. So it's successful because it's always successful. But is it successful and we keep it or is it successful and we don't keep it? Both are important to be able to know. And it's important and success comes from a data-driven business when you can do what's called failing fast, isn't it? Fail fast. So assess up front what's the success factor we want to see if we do this. Review specific time frame. We're going to give this a month. We're going to give it three months. We're going to give it a year. Whatever it is, you need to be able to track that and see progress towards it. I'd say a year is probably too long. You know, fail fast is pretty up to three months. But you could do that, and that's something that we will do. That's how you would track annual year-over-year progress. Is it going great? Is it going badly? But because we've got the report packs all tied and all connected and all automatically refreshing when our semantic model refreshes, it means that we can keep a track on it and we understand what's going on at all times throughout the whole business. Rather than it being a case of saying, well, I'm going to build a report pack and I'm going to build this deck that's going to show the senior leadership team what I want to do and what success is going to look like. And we go away and we do it. And I said, well, is it going well? They go, oh, give me a week. I'll rerun all the numbers and I'll rebuild the report. No. Okay. That's a really terrible way of working. Any, any numbers in your report that have been touched by these grubby mitts, yeah, human hands, are tainted, okay? If you, if you don't believe that, you shouldn't be in analytics and you shouldn't be doing business intelligence. Our role is to make sure everything comes through and is automatically refreshed and automatically built, okay? So when we know, I've refreshed this, it's come from the corporate systems. It's refreshed. It's the first of the month, so I can now look at last month's numbers. That's the same way it was processed the month before. That's how we've agreed it should be processed. Be no intervention. There's no bias brought into that deck. That's also a double-edged sword because if you're used to being able to tinker and tailor and make sure, oh, look, here's this beautiful number set. Oh, well, it didn't look so good in this area, but don't worry. I've hidden it a bit. I've buried it a little bit. That's not what true enterprise BI is about. True enterprise BI, true single pane of glass reporting, true data-driven business is very much about saying, I'm going to have all of that. I want to understand what's going on. And I want us to see exactly where our business is and do that without somebody interfering with the numbers. Okay. So we've got all that. We've got our dashboards. Right? We've got reports that we can classify, we can put them into groups. So in here, we've got them in terms of taxi, in terms of city bike, in terms of water towers. Okay? There, there's a method to the way this is built. Right? The other thing that we've got okay, is we've got the capability. So the way these work, we can chat about them in teams. Right? And I've set this up so that the team is being used to share out to grant access to the app. Okay. So I can turn around and say, I'm going to share this with the team and say who I want to share it to. And so in this case, let's share this with Danny. Name there we go. Share it with Danny. Okay. We can then say, let's share this number with Danny. So that number is being shared. We can talk about stuff. We can do a lot more within the report content. And because it's all happening in here, and everything is all being tied to it, 
So because we've got this all integrated, we've got the capability to add comments. So I can click in here and say, I didn't even do it on one of these, let's do it on one of these. We can come in here, say, let's going to add a comment here. Yeah, I can add out somebody. So say, uh, Danny, uh -huh. can you explain why man pattern has so much more blah, blah, blah. Okay. Hit post. So we're actually starting to have this. Everything's tied into teams. It's all in teams. The access rights are in teams. We see in team. You're in the team. You can see this. I need you to see this today. This person is now a member of our senior leadership team. We can add them to the team, quite literally. And in teams, team, 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 teams. And in teams, okay, we've got here the senior leadership team on the left. New York City, senior leadership team. Got an all areas conversation. We could put something else. We've got the app pinned to the team. Okay, it's here. Everyone can see what's going on. We can look, we can have our conversations about it. We can see, look at bike hires, where I've said that. We've got various comments that we can add into the, you've got through the dashboard. If we went through, it was if we followed the tips thing, wasn't it, that we were in before, we go through into that report pack or into that report page. Again, we can click on the conversations and we can see what's happening about that. So we can click on here, add a comment. We can see already there's a comment being added here. Can you tell what's going on? It's all tied up. It's all associated within this team. We're not having emails going back and forth. We're not doing things like that. Okay. You might be saying, well, you know, do we really want to go that way? We could do these things differently. But the idea of having a single pane of glass is around saying our senior leadership team this is what we want them to go to, one place for all their content. If you think about it, traditionally, I might ha start have something similar to what I've got on the left here, where we've got lots and lots of teams that potentially do different things. We've got New York City taxis report, we've got water tower stuff. You know, these could all be the sorts of things that you would have in a traditional business. And if you follow the traditional model that everyone has their own silo of content, we might say, oh, no, 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 we can bring it together somewhere. And they might do that. But unless you live that bring it together, you ain't bringing it together. Okay? So we've got a team. Everything's associated with the team. What does that look like in the app setup side? So if we exit the app, okay, and we go to the workspace for it, we can see if we go to update the app, Got the app information, we could put that in. We could put specific links in there to go to a, uh, to a specific SharePoint site, to go to something else. We want them to do things. So we might set up a SharePoint site where people could log requests to have updates made to the report or have something like that done. We could choose to put stuff in here in terms of adding links to it in the content or anything. Okay, The world is really is your oyster with this. There's a multitude of ways to do it. And it all comes down really as you start to build up the audiences. And you can see here, We've got this NYC SLT is in there as the access group. Okay. So the reason behind us having the other groups in or multiple groups in here, and you can have multiple, you could have an admin group, you could have like a, a support group as well. Depending on how you structure it, you might have different people that are doing different elements of it. And you might have a like a, a center for excellence group that might be in everything. You could go down that route. It depends. Depends on how your business is structured, how you want to bring in that interface with your IT team and that function that's going to bring through and do some of that ETL processing for you. It's important to think through and understand what that is. And again, that's a big topic that we often have conversations with our clients about. But we do this so that when we get to the point of saying, right, who's going to manage this, we can start to delegate this out. So you can see here, we've got the New York City SLT. I can choose to get the members of it. I can say, oh, well, we want to drop Danny out in the moment. Or I say, no, maybe we want to bring Danny back in. Okay. I can easily grant access to Danny. I could say, well, we want to bring in um, yeah, onboarding. Okay. So we can grant access to that. Pit. And you can see we've got all this available. And this is a free power app that we've made available. We really use stuff from um, Power Apps 911 and from Raza, 
I, you know, just as we was going through some of the tips and hints and stuff like that that they suggested and things, that it kind of folded into here. So it's available on our GitHub. Get in touch and we'll share that with you. Um, but basically, the idea behind this is we can put that control out there with somebody else to manage who should have access to this. It's not going to work for you for every group that you set up. But in terms of managing who's accessing report content, this is really what you want, isn't it? Because with this, we can say, actually, no, we added onboarding. It was a mistake or onboarding is just a temporary thing. They've now seen everything they need to see. We can remove them. They'd lose access to it. It's very controlled. Okay. It's also very, not too much public, but open. It's transparent. You know, you grant ownership access to specific people. That remains an IT function to be able to say, right, Ross is going to be an owner of this group, or oh, Danny is going to be an owner of this group, or John or Steve. That still needs to be added. Okay. You can use your ITSM service desk tool to then manage and track who's being made owner of these things. You can audit who's the owners of various groups, who's got those rights. You can add additional auditing into this app. So who's done, what changes have you made and have that emailed to you or emailed to a central thing or have something logging a ticket at your service desk if you want for you to log and close. There's lots of things you can do with this further and to extend on it. Okay. But this is the basic part of it. So you start to then allow people to manage that area of, the, of your business. So who needs to be in charge or who needs to be in this group to see it? They can do this. So you'll no doubt have somebody who's really in charge of managing the SLT as a whole, make them the owner of the group, they can drop them in. Okay. But again, the big part comes and the, the, the value out of it comes because everything that they need is visible from here. Okay. So we've got, you can see, we've got the three semantic models coming in here. And yes, I know we preach aim for one. Okay. For the sake of this report pack, we left it as three deliberately because they went through different things. Okay. So we had the bikes aggregation. So the bikes is using a direct query connection, which is slower, but it allows us to do more. But we speeded it up by using an import function for monthly and yearly types of aggregation. So there's a difference there that makes it much quicker to, to run and to be used. Got the new water type, which is a traditional import, but very small, but has some challenges around data quality and data clean and cleansing of data. Okay, some real fun challenges to get through in there in terms of managing the app for it. And then lastly, we've got the New York Taxi data set, which we've deliberately left. Okay, I have deliberately left this New York Taxi data set as, as Power BI Pro. So it is restricted to a one gigabyte model size. This is able to continually produce report content. Oh, I see it's gone. It's, this is just this year, isn't it? So we've got 24 million this year. We've got five plus years worth of data in here, all under a pro license. Okay. So it's entirely possible for you to do an awful lot with a pro subscription. That was the point of this. Okay. There are things that you can't do it with a pro. And that's then when you say, right, we need to switch up and get into a premium capacity side. Okay, or it's not premium because premium per user or premium capacity, but that will depend on your size. And although premium capacity is going, we've now fabric, which is a, a whole different thing. Um, yeah, anyway. Okay. So we have those three models separately for a very good reason. Okay. But it wouldn't matter if you had 20 or 30 models bring them up, surface everything up in one area. The key thing that you want to be doing is making sure if you've got one function, you should definitely have one model for it. If you've got three or four models talking about one function, you've got a challenge because how are you validating making sure those numbers are the same? And how are you validating making sure that the business logic that's applied to each model is the same and is consistent and remains consistent so that when there's a change made here, which there will be invariably, it's reflected on all of them. So having one model allows you to do that. If you keep paying that back for all the headache of managing the changes through that we've got to have these changes for the start of the next fiscal year or something, can be more of a challenge. Because you've only got one model, you have more resources to wrap around that model. As opposed to spreading your resources really thin, you're able to bring them together centrally. Okay. So we've shown you this whistle-stop tour of really what it takes to be Data driven and to use a single pane of glass, and also kind of what it's bringing to the fore for you as a business. 
What do you think? And the last thing, the last reason why you really want to make sure you've got fewer semantic models and really where the benefits we come from them is this. So how is it that you can definitely be pushing that switch? Yeah, what you've created, I'm not, I don't trust it. Okay, it's this way. So we've got in here the semantic model. We can come to go, have a look at it, open up settings, and then down in here, we've got endorsement and discovery. Okay, so anybody, anyone can promote a model. Okay, so if you're building your model, you think, oh, I'm amazing, I'm great, promote it. Okay, you can restrict who can certify. So as a business, what we would always recommend is come up with your certification process. Right? It might be simple as saying, just request it. Okay? Because potentially, whoever's approving or marking certified isn't necessarily the one who's going to do it. And what we've found as well is businesses that get really into the, well, we've got guidelines, it doesn't work because you're certifying a model, not a report. Okay? The model is the key. And the model isn't going to have all the semantic, all the not semantic, all the like formatting built into it that you would expect. You could make sure you got the number formatting right, but in terms of saying, well, we want you to use this color, we want you to use this, we want you to use that. These are the standards that we have as a business. It's not going to happen in the model. Okay, so you need to be sensible about it. But this is something that you can definitely tick the box for, and you can make sure that we you put someone on the hook for it. So if you know Ross is going to come through and say, well, this is what I'm going to tick and come through here. So I'm going to make it discoverable, which of course means, I, do I see it if I look in Excel or in Power BI desktop for show me a data set? So if you're going through, this is a highly confidential, all HR data, it's really secret, 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 with everyone's home address information that we need to be able to visualize it because somebody wants it. Can't imagine why you'd want that, but you know, there's nothing ethical. But anyway, okay. That might be one you might want to untick that box for so people don't randomly stumble upon it. But make discoverable, definitely it's a good thing for those core line of business report packs. Based on if it's promoted or certified, I'll well, assume a bit on that actually to make it easier for you. Based on if it's promoted or certified, will dictate whether it, how high up the list it appears. So it's alphabetical, or it's not alphabetical, it's last modified, based on it's last modified. But if it's certified, it will always appear at the top. So certificate, certified data sets go and then by last modified, by date modified from the top, then promoted, and then non bot. So you kind of get to that. There is a hierarchical structure. So your line of business ones, your people who go, oh, I want to write a report about this, they're going to find it because they go connect to a data set and, oh, these are the top ones that I need. Okay. The metadata that you put around it as well is really important. So we can certify, we can make it a hit apply, and there we go. We see it says who's reviewed it, when it was reviewed everything that we would want to see there. Okay. And again, we can do stuff around putting a more of a, an application style layer around it so that we've got some level of governance and control around there as well. If we want to do that as a business. So what do you reckon then? As you start to build this up and piece it together, okay, one of the things you need to realize and really recognize as well is that this is a marked shift from kind of the traditional out of the box viewpoint. So, a traditional out of the box viewpoint nowadays is very much functional. Okay, I'm going to board an application. Brilliant. And it's got built in analytics suite. Excellent. So, I've got all that analytics on this application. Great. Not that, is it? It's that. And we want that. Okay. You have to do the legwork to make this work for your business. There's no shortcuts to it. There's no way to say, oh, you can just avoid it, right? And that's what you will hopefully see and what we really want to see more and more businesses doing that are providing services like this in terms of, oh, we've developed our lovely app with its brilliant new reporting features, is that's not good enough. What we really want is a clear and easy way of connecting to your data and getting information out from it. I don't mind if it's like a view connection, like a data, direct database connection in terms of a view, or if it's case saying you have to structure and download CSV files or Parquet files or the like. But what we need is something that we can just download data from, okay? Because 
we need to be able to get that data out of our out of our applications, our line of business applications, so that we can then structure it in such a way that it can be used across the business. If we are just going to keep putting in new applications in their whole new silo, all we're doing is continuing the siloed way of working. And time and again, I keep being told, oh, silos are bad. We don't want silos. Silos aren't the way to run anymore. You know, 21st century, we want big, broad, like, everyone should see what's going on. So we need to live a dream. We need to recognize that that siloed approach is potentially it's great because this application, it reports so well. It's amazing to see everything that's going on. But I, I've got no idea in terms of the context that it means for my wider business. And that's then the problem. That's why we say, well, we need to bring everything in and bring it all together. Because, you know, just looking at our cost to manufacture, for example, and, well, that's great. That's so much the raw materials cost, but how much did the, what was the electric bill? What was the people cost? What was the recruitment cost? What was the, you know, what were the taxes? What were, you know, all these things that kind of come through beyond that. And we need to then start to piece it together so that we can have that top level view that makes it 100% crystal clear what is the health of our organization. And if we think back to our dashboard, it would be lovely, wouldn't it? Just be able to have like, our, we've got our senior leadership team, we're going to have a CEO dashboard above it, which just like with a red light, or sorry, not red light, we never have a red light, with a, with a green light, or an amber light, or maybe a little red dot. So we know what yeah, but yeah. But you, you get the point, you know, it's good, it's not so good, or, you know, they're all crap, okay? Those are things that are really important and make a big difference to the way that we are going to be able to run our business and communicate with us internally about what's going on with, our, with things. It also helps break down the barriers, doesn't it? This is one of the other bits that just kind of, it's a bit of an emergent result. Because everyone's looking at the same data, a lot of the barriers that we put up to protect ourselves from the other silos are broken down. Because we can see what's going on. We also know they can see what's going on in our area. So there's a lot, there's a greater chance that people will actually be willing to work together. I'm going to say it's definitely going to happen, but you've got, it opens up a lot more easily and is more readily available in a business that is more transparent and open than if you keep those dedicated silos of information. Okay. So let us know down below what you'd like to see in our next series. Okay, we're thinking, I'm thinking of doing something a bit more specific. We'll do some shorter videos about specific areas, specific problems. Maybe look at some DAX measures, some um, power query functions, and we'll start piecing all these things together. Okay, and that way, hopefully, it'll give you a nice toolkit that you can use in your armory. If I'm now a Power BI developer, yes. Okay, but for now, stay safe, take care, ta-da. <laughs>